Hi everyone, Catherine Drury here, Director of Children's Ministries at St. Gregory the Great Episcopal Church in Athens, Georgia. I miss seeing all of you so much, I especially miss our kids at St. Gregory's. And I thought, hey, how about if I share a story with you today? You know, this coming Sunday is the third Sunday in the season of Easter. You, you knew that, right? Easter is such a great mystery, such a wonderful celebration. We can't keep it in one Sunday. It has to go on for 50 days, all the way from Easter Sunday to Pentecost. It's a great season. And the scripture, the gospel scripture um, appointed for this particular Sunday is from the gospel according to Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. You can read that in your Bible, and I think you should. And you might want to act it out with your family. It's a really cool story. It, let's see, I'm going to read you a version, though, from this book called Read, Wonder, Listen. It's stories from the Bible for young readers. It has words from Laura O'Leary and pictures from Anne Shank. And let's see, Woodlake is the publisher. Look at that pretty picture. Well, that looks like one from the beginning of Jesus' life. Now we know with Easter, Jesus has just died on the cross. That was terrible when he was laid in the tomb. But then, three days later, they went to the tomb and he wasn't there. He had risen. Well, some of his disciples had seen him. But not everyone knew what was going on. This story was called On the Way to Emmaus. And here's the picture that goes with it. Let's see, what do we see here? We see two people, two men, sitting at a low table. They're sitting on cushions. They have, I see three cups. I think that's maybe some grapes and some bread. So it looks like a meal in front of them. Hmm, I wonder why there are three cups two people. Let's see. Sometimes good news is hard to believe. When Mary Magdalene told the others that Jesus was alive again, many said it was just her imagination or, or wishful thinking. So while Mary was dancing with joy, others left Jerusalem feeling heavy-hearted. Cleopas and a friend were on their way to the little village of Emmaus. As they walked, they talked about the events of the past days. Was it really only a week ago that Jesus had ridden into the city? They had welcomed him with such high hopes. How quickly things can change. As they were walking, another traveler joined them. He seemed to appear out of nowhere. The stranger asked what they were talking about with, what, with such somber faces. Where have you been, wondered Cleopas. Is there anyone in Jerusalem who hasn't heard what happened to Jesus? Jesus was a prophet, explained his friend, who said and did amazing things. Many of us believed he was the Messiah, the one sent by God to save our people. Now he's dead, and so are all of our hopes. Some of the women went to the tomb this morning, added Cleopas. They found it empty, and they say that Jesus is alive. But we've not seen him. The stranger sighed. No, he said, it is hard for you to see or believe. Maybe you have not learned how to look. Then the stranger began to talk. He talked about the sacred writings that held the hopes of their people. He talked about the prophets and the old stories. Cleopas and his friend heard and saw things they had never noticed before. They saw how God sometimes uses hurt and sadness to help and heal. They saw how God works through all things, good and bad. The stranger showed them where to look to find a different kind of Messiah. 
not a king, but a servant. Not a warrior on a horse, but a peacemaker on a donkey. Not mighty and powerful, but gentle and loving. Not wrapped in tough armor, but open to being hurt. Cleopas and his friend were amazed. Their hearts felt warm. Hope sprang up in them like a little flame. Maybe the women were right. Maybe the story of Jesus was not over. Maybe the cross did not mean that Jesus had failed. Maybe they needed to look at it in a new way. When they reached Emmaus, it was getting dark. Cleopas urged the stranger to stay with them. As they sat together around the table, something wonderful happened. Their guest said the familiar words of blessing. Blessed are you, Lord God, ruler of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Then he took the bread, and he broke it, and he gave it to them. Once again, they felt as if they were seeing in a new way. Awake, aware. The stranger on the road, the guest at the table, was Jesus. And as suddenly as he had come, he was gone. But not gone. His place was empty, but somehow they knew he was still there with them. So their hearts felt warm and glad as they shared their bread and wondered, about many things. That's the end of this story on the page, but we know that this story doesn't really end, that God's story is still alive and working in our world, always. I wonder, I wonder which man the artist thought would be Cleopas. I wonder what the other disciple's name is. The Bible doesn't say. I wonder if you have an idea now about who that third cup might belong to. Jesus told us about new life, new life in Christ. I wonder what that new life might look like. I wonder if you're seeing things in a new way these days. We're not able to be together, all of us, around that great altar table in the church building. But we're still God's great family, God's great church, working in the world and doing things and taking care of one another. And you know, every time we we're at the table, every table, it's a table of the Lord. So whenever you have a bite to eat, know that God's there with you and has given us good work to do, good hope, good love. We're to be peacemakers. We're to take care of one another. I can't wait to see you all in person, but until then, I'm so grateful to get to spend some time with you. Bye for now.